Okay, so I was sitting at my desk and this came across to me and I wanted to share with you guys and see if you are just as confused or dumbfounded as I am. Now, the person that makes this statement has complained in the past that people use his name, his face for clicks, views, and so forth. So I'm not going to use his name. I'm not going to, I'm going to cover his face up. I'm going to distort his, his voice. But I want you just to pay attention to what he says, because to me, this makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. See if you see or hear anything that causes alarm to you. You call like out a demon by name, yeah. right? So not necessarily like just lust or the things that we would think in our natural mind, but there's like demonic names in the yeah. spiritual realm. Can you kind of unpack that a little bit? Now this person whom this lady is interviewing, you don't know who this guy is. Clearly this person has been dis disguised perfectly. There's no way you can know who this person is, but they're asking, when you do cast demons out, why do you do so by name? Do you have to do so by name? Now, we believe, those of us who actually read the read our scriptures, now, we could be wrong, could be wrong, and we've asked for proof, biblical proof, scriptures where a Christian has a demon or has been demonized or whatever the verbiage you want to use, give us proof. But the question is, why do you have to call them out by name? Yeah, so demons are personalities. So when the demon says its name, it's not like where we're born and we're the only one that's like a name, but it would be like anger is a, it's the personality of the spirit. I want to make it through this pretty timely, but when you say that demons are uh, their personality, I'm going to need some scriptures for that. I think I understand what you're trying to get to, that they are, that what they really are, they bring about this particular personality of this. I get that, but... We don't have any scriptures for that. I would love to see. I would. I would love to see one though. I really would. So Jezebel, anger, bitterness, resentment, murder. These are the personalities of the demons. So Ephesians six says we battle not against flesh and blood, and the Greek translation is, but we battle persons without bodies. Okay, there's my first issue. Well, one of my first issues. I shouldn't say. I've, I guess I got a bunch of first issues, which doesn't make sense to have a first issue, but it's one of my big issues. He says the Greek translation is persons without bodies. It could be. It could be. I've never heard of that. It'd be a new one by me. Well, the way we find out is let's just go simply look at the scriptures and let's see. Ephesians 6, 12, Ephesians 6, 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, or we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, one more time, let's listen to what he says. I want to make sure I'm investigating the right word. So Ephesians 6 says we battle not against flesh and blood. And the Greek translation is, but we battle persons without bodies. So he says we battle persons without bodies. Let's go see. He says for, uh, for our, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay. And so the word, the Greek word that's over here uh, for flesh and blood, which is like he, like he would say it, uh, haima, which is blood and flesh, sarka, which is flesh so obviously against people we're not a battling against them but against rulers and so this is archos which is rulers uh against powers uh exousias okay so far so good but i'm not seeing what he's saying uh also against the world forces or world rulers okay so so far not seeing what he says and then also uh against darkness no i'm sorry of this darkness of this dark world and then also against spiritual forces pneumatica tame ponerias uh, ponerias so this these are evil spirits or spiritual forces of wickedness in high places now i maybe i missed what he said let me just hear what he said again because I may have gotten it. I may not have heard correctly. Ephesians 6 says we battle not against flesh and blood. And the Greek translation is, but we battle persons without bodies. Okay. So persons without bodies. That's not in the scriptures. That's not in the scriptures. So we're battling persons or personalities without bodies. That is not biblical. Why he, why he uh, used the Greek or why he brought up the Greek or invoked the Greek. The Greek, he says, means persons without bodies. No, it does not. And there's a problem. If you want to twist the scriptures to make that statement, you have to do so intentionally. Or maybe ignorantly, someone told you that and you ran with it, but you should know better. That's not in the scriptures. So strike one on that part. Let's keep going. So these are personalities that come and live inside of people, according to Matthew 12. Yeah. And then a lot of people don't realize that their personality becomes like that spirit. 
and, and again, according to Matthew 12, that is not what it says, but so I don't belabor the point. Let's just, let's keep moving. So some people might say, well, how could there be a spirit of murder in you and a spirit of murder in me if there's only one spirit of murder? But it's not, it's the demon naming its function. Yeah. So when a demon gives you its name, it's its function. So like Jesus, the man of the tombs, the legion was the demon's name. Yeah. Or Jesus, like the Bible says, he's not giving us a spirit of fear, right. but of power, love, and a sound mind. So fear is a spirit that God hasn't given us. Yeah. And that spirit causes us to be fearful and timid. timid. No, he's saying we don't have that. That is not our spirit. For some reason, people like this unidentified person whom you have no idea who this is because we've done a wonderful job of covering up his face and hiding or disguising his voice. So you don't know who this person is, but people like him, they'll take this passage and say the opposite of, of what it's actually saying. He says that God did not give us a spirit of fear. This adjective, this fear describing the spirit, God didn't give us that. So he takes it as though we do have it or some do have it, but it was given to them not by God, but by the devil or by a demon. That's not what this passage says. This is clear eisegeting you're reading into the passage. What he did say was he gave us the ability. He gave us one, a spirit of, or he gave us power or the ability. He gave us love. He gave us discipline. Now, are we saying that those are also a spirit, that there's a spirit of love? a spirit of power, a spirit of a sound mind. So are there angels or demons that also have that same personality according to the way he speaks? Or are these just things that God has given us as believers, the spirit in the spirit that we have these things? These are, for example, love, that's a byproduct of the spirit. That's a fruit of the spirit. So too is discipline or sound mind or the way we see in other passages put self-control sober-mindedness. Those are fruits of the spirit. When you have the spirit in you, these are what you have, not fear. Now, I don't want to make that point because he's getting ready to say something that, that just makes me scratch my head and say, huh. And I'm wondering, am I the only one getting this? Did I, did I miss something? Am I misunderstanding something? So oftentimes when we do deliverance, you want to call them out by name because they respond to their name. It's like a dog. You could yell at a dog, but you have authority over it when you know the dog's name. So that's why I say like it's, it's a lot better if you call the demon out by name because it'll, it'll get a response out of it. Because if you just say demon come out and there's 20 demons in the person, the demon's like, which one? I, we don't have to come out. So we like to be specific in calling them out by name. So this is the part that just made me scratch my head. I mean, am I the only one not getting this? So you're going to call the specific demon out by name, how you know the specific demon's name. I guess the demon has to cooperate and tell you every time, even though we only have one example of that happening. That's Jesus asking, uh, asking Legion and Legion is basically saying there's a bunch of us, but I'll leave that alone. But the absolutely astonishing statement was that we'll call that demon out because if we just call them out in general, we'll, what are we saying that all of them come out? Why wouldn't you call if if you do assume you do have the ability to cast out demons and call all of them out? Why wouldn't you just call out every last demon? Why not just give an all call and just say every last demon, every last demon, every last demonic spirit come out in Jesus name, according to how you guys believe? Why not just do that? Why not make one deliverance once once and for all? Do like I guess how we believe that Jesus did for us. You know, whom the sun sets free is free indeed, thoroughly, continuously, according to the word that's used there in the Greek, antos, which is referring to this. Why not do it the way that Jesus did for us? Why don't you do the same thing? Why not call them all out at the same time? Am I missing something here? Is it just me? Or did I just hear him say, we'll just call out the one individually, maybe two individually, but otherwise they'll all come out. Anyway, you guys tell me what you think. I was a bit confused, and so maybe you guys can help me out.